Thanks, Royce, for setting us up again. Uh, welcome to the December 2016 New Mexico Drought Monitoring Work Group. This is Dave Dubois in Las Cruces, and uh, let's go around the uh, around the room, the virtual room, and uh, announce yourself. Raymond Beta, Bureau of Reclamation, Albuquerque. Roy Spano, uh, Senior Service Hydrologist here at Weather Service Albuquerque. Uh, Julie Valdez and Molly Magnuson, Office of the State Engineer. Anthony Chavez with Farm Service Agency in Albuquerque. Jason Gregoire with National Weather Service El Paso. Curtis McFadden, Army Corps of Engineers, Albuquerque District. Uh, this is Sigmund Sober from the Santa Fe Pawaukee Soil and Water Conservation District. Uh, Kyle Mason with Department of Homeland Security and Emergency Management. Anybody else? And, and Dave, that's everybody that's okay. on the uh, go to right now. Okay, wonderful. Well, might as well get started. Uh, Royce, you ready to go with the Weather Service yep. Outlook? Okay, thanks. Yep. All right, good morning, everybody. And I uh, hope uh, so far your holidays are shaping up good. So uh, kind of picking up where we left off in November, uh, here's a look at our precipitation. Uh, this is the uh, roof forecast air derived AHAPS precipitation. Uh, November was wet, as we all know. Um, the percentage of normals are a little high there. It's something we've been talking about for a long time, but looking at the bottom right, um, that, that fits the pattern pretty well. Most of the areas of the state saw uh, the very wet November, which made up for the very dry October. Uh, so as of yesterday morning, the Rural Forecast Center analysis shows uh, December to date, and uh, we're not looking as great. Uh, basically, the northwest quadrant of the state has uh, done fairly well. Now, mind you, that is also going to be a lot of gauge-derived precipitation up there, uh, so maybe a little above normal, and then the extreme southeast corner. But uh, basically, the tap is kind of turned off for a lot of the state. Um, we're well below normal as of yesterday morning. Uh, then, again, this is November looking at it from the perspective of the PRISM data, which I really like its methods. Again, shows really above normal precipitation for a good amount of the state. Uh, that southern tier, though, is still showing the dryness in November. So that's kind of uh, two months combined down there. So something for us to think about. But statewide, again, I, I don't like that number, but it worked out to be the 12th wettest uh, November on record, almost uh, three-quarters of an inch uh, above normal. So, again, this is prison data through uh, yeah, as of yesterday morning. The northern mountains have done okay, uh, the extreme southeast, but uh, most of the rest of the state is uh, well below normal and what w where we normally would be. All right, this is divisional data. This is uh, from our colleagues over at uh, Southern Regional Climate Center, and uh, this is a, one of the NOAA Reese's. But this is the uh, November uh, data right there, and you can see, again, all the climate divisions are uh, near or above normal with the exception of Division 8, that southern tier, uh, running about 77% normal for November there. And, uh, but the SPIs are all in the uh, kind of normal, a little bit above range there. But uh, definitely November was wet. Uh, 30 days ending December 17th, um, that was the weekend, that's when the data was still being processed. Uh, showing the same pattern we're seeing on the AHAPS, the radar and gauge combined multi sensor data that. Uh, only climate division one in that northwest quadrant is really doing well. Everyone else is right near normal or well below normal. Division eight and division three are both showing quite a bit below normal. Division three showing a 27% of normal uh, for the last 30 days through the 17th, and division eight, uh, southern tier, at 30% of normal. And then 60 day, that's kind of capturing. Um, you know, most of the water year, but you're seeing kind of things balance out that uh, that wet November has helped with Division 8 since uh, for the last 60 days is only at 44 percent of normal and uh, actually Division 6, which is uh, the Albuquerque, just east Albuquerque, the Sandias, the Monzanos through there, um, they are right at about 76 percent of normal. So certainly some longer term dryness 
and we're seeing that on some of the other indicators there. But uh, I think the divisional data is a little bit better when we want to look at things statewide. So that's kind of the trends we're seeing right now. <clears throat> statewide graph here, again, November, where we are in comparison, 12th wettest on, uh, for the long-term record right there. In calendar year to date, a 38th driest, about uh, 1.3 inches below. Um, it's, it's still kind of in that middle of the range right there, but certainly uh, um, not what we'd like. So here's the 30 through 90 day and um, the one year SPI so far to date. This is as of data through uh, the 18th, so this was pulled off yesterday. And it was data processed through the morning of uh, the 18th. And you can see the SPI for the last 30 days there, again, showing that same pattern. Northwest part of the state's doing okay. Uh, the other parts are uh, kind of lingering there. You're seeing some of that November wetness in there as well to the southeast. Um, so you can see kind of the shift over the last 90 days where uh, the extreme dryness in the east, uh, November helped out a lot, but uh, you're starting to see that dry pattern returning. Uh, this is from as of yesterday, or as of Sunday, pulled yesterday from the uh, our partners over the U.S. Geological Survey. This is the 14-day average stream flow for that time period over the state. Uh, most river gauges are showing about uh, in that normal period. There's some some gauges maybe a little bit below, some above, and that can be various reasons, uh, either uh, reservoir releases or it's normally dry. Um, but the main stem rivers seem to be about where they should be right now. So there's a snowpack update. I have a, uh, and as a note, um, Chris Romero from NRCS is unavailable today, so I do have a presentation that was as of last week. We can go through there, Dave. But uh, Snowtel basin-wide this morning, I pulled this off. Um, our northern basins are looking okay. Um, uh, Rio Chama certainly is doing quite well. The Hamas and um, uh, Cimarron are looking are at normal, a little bit above normal. The rest are running that below normal. Pecos at 52% normal, and uh, down south you can see the numbers are just not great. Most of the snow so far has been combined to the northern tier basins. Um, I looked up some numbers yesterday for an interview with uh, KKOB here recently, and uh, compared to normal, compared to last year, we're we're well behind, um, probably about, on average, 10 to 20 percent behind where we were last year, this time of year. Now, of course, mind you, that snowpack numbers will change. Um, we're looking good now in some basins, but. Now, looking up at north in the headwaters in Colorado, a little bit different story, Rio Grande, up Rio Grande, still below normal, 87 percent, but it has improved. Uh, the San Juan Basin's actually looking quite well. Um, that's a very lump number, but I think the San Juan individually headwaters were uh, well over 100 percent. I want to say 110 to 115, but I'd have to dig back into the numbers there. But uh, certainly the San Juan's looking better up. Rio Grande's getting there. And then uh, for those uh, little bit of New Mexico that feeds out of the Arkansas Basin, they're at, they're at normal right now. So soil moisture uh, from NASA Sport, this is the zero to 200 centimeter relative change. Um, you can see that drying over the eastern plains. Um, but certainly the precipitation data is following that same pattern. Again, this is the zero to 200 centimeter, so it's the deep soil column. Um, and you can see again where we're, we're seeing the moisture remaining in the northwest. On the zero to 10 centimeter, the top soil, uh, trend is there as well, drying over the eastern half of the state, or almost eastern two-thirds. Uh, those northern mountains, of course, those are snow covered now, so they're showing as uh, very moist on those, uh, on that remote sense data. But again, the pattern is there. We're starting to see that drying. Certainly something we need to consider um, as we're going ahead. So this is something I don't bring up very often, but uh, it is there, and I do throw it out uh, when it's available. Um, this is from our Climate Prediction Center. Uh, it's kind of buried on there, but the websites are at the bottom. They do some objective long-term and short-term blend indicators, and you can dig in um, and see. But there's kind of the, the uh, bottom there, Western formulation, you know, 30% from the Palmer Hydrologic Index, 30% from the 60-month uh, Palmer Z Index, and some precipitations in there. So long-term, uh, certainly showing drought 
uh, D0 and even some D1 um, through several of the climate divisions in New Mexico. Um, again, that D8 is showing up pretty well. Division 8 showing up pretty well right there in the south. And uh, now, mind you, this was through the 10th, so that's not going to count the recent precipitation. Short term, again, we're seeing the same pattern, near normal for uh, most of the state uh, on the short term blend indicators, and there's the indicators in the bottom left, uh, and showing that, wet and that, that wetting trend over the west. So, regional drought status, um, the last one as of last week, nationwide. Um, not a lot of change. We're still looking at California having the bulk of it. Uh, basically been some line shifting, but New Mexico, there's been no change since the last drought meeting. And there we are right there. Uh, those who have not looked since then, uh, based off recommendations, they pulled out the uh, D0 in the north and uh, moved the, the lines around a little bit, but we've basically been in a static pattern here. And then there's our three-month change there. Still seeing that area D1 drought over the eastern plains and uh, along the uh, Arizona and New Mexico border. So uh, going into the extended outlooks, I've cut down the section a little bit. Um, there's, there's other resources to define this, so I kind of wanted to cut down a little bit, and, but keep the gist of it. So again, this is from CPC's briefing yesterday afternoon. Uh, La Nina, a weak La Nina is still there. You can see the sea surface temperature anomalies um, from the 20th of November through 17th of December along the equator, uh, plus or minus five north. So showing a weak La Nina trend there. Uh, there's our sea surface temperature departures. Again, the weekly, um, they are kind of persisting at that very weak borderline La Nina. And there's a different view as well. The 3.4 region um, over the last week has been minus 0.4, but you can see again the long, the longer trend has been oscillating a little bit, but it's been hovering at that 0.5. And then the model outlook as of the 13th is what went into the outlooks that were just released um, last week. Uh, as expected, um, everything kind of transitions to. Uh, in some neutral, uh, you know, Lanada, so to speak, um, pretty pretty soon. We're not expecting these conditions, and, and CPC never really did expect them to last through the whole winter. Um, so probably in the next month or so, starting to transition into a neutral pattern. And then you can see the models start kind of going either way. Uh, you have one or two models that uh, later want to start pushing us back, uh, push us well above normal, almost a, a uh, by the end of the period into a uh, El Nino, others are kind of in between, so uh, take it for what it's worth, but predominantly looking based off of this at neutral conditions, the remainder of 2017, we'll of course see what actually happens. So the forecast summary from ENSO, we still have La Nina advisory. Uh, they are seeing weak La Nina conditions, ocean and atmosphere coupled, starting to see that representation there, but it's very weak. It was never really a sure surefire La Nina, um, but uh, they're still showing below normal. Yeah, as expected, CPC is expecting a transition into neutral uh, conditions, La Nada, by uh, during the January through March 2017. So the outlooks uh, issued on the 15th. This is the January outlook um, for precipitation. Uh, all of New Mexico except for the very corner, the four corners, uh, showing normal to below normal precipitation with uh, kind of a uh, increased, uh, a little bit higher probability in the southeast corner of the state, January. Temperatures, again, showing normal to above normal. Now, one thing we want to remember, this is looking at month wide. Um, even when we're having these cold, cold snaps like we've had here in the last uh, week or so, we're quickly rebounding to above normal temperatures, or even then some of those temperatures are still remaining above normal. So uh, this is not counting for the sub-monthly variability, but certainly um, that is kind of what we're seeing, though. We're, you know, we're cooling down, but you know, it's winter. It's still above where we normally would be. Uh, so this is the January through March. So finishing off winter, going into the first month of spring, precipitation outlook, not a lot of change, normal to below normal. Um, now, maybe a little bit better for the Rio Grande in some cases. Uh, the upper Rio Grande Basin and San Juan are expected to be in the uh, equal chances category. So it can go either way, but um, that 
that might be a little bit better for our snowpack and precipitation. Temperature, different story though. Uh, still normal to above normal and highly weighted toward above normal. Remember, these are, are tertiaux, so we're moving around numbers, so there's still that 33% chance in there of, um, of near normal, but, uh, you know, good chance we're going to stay warm through the spring. So, of course, the potential impacts on uh, snowpack are going to be there as well. And then going a little bit further out, this is February, March, April, so transitioning into spring. Same story, dry and warm. Uh, this is just com becoming the new normal here. Of course, certainly you can have uh, weekly or subweekly variations in here. This is just a seasonal outlook, but um, you know, certainly that that's the transition we're going into. Seasonal drought outlook, no no surprise there. Persisting drought. Um, they're kind of not making a prediction over most of the state now. Uh, and it's just going to depend on where the precipitation hits and uh, what goes on from there. So questions on that, and then I'll roll into the discussion material. There's a current map, and don't have a draft. There's no, at least as of this morning, I've not seen any proposed changes from the drought author. So um, this is where we are. Back to you, Dave. Right. So yeah, draft one from I think it was Brad um, uh, from uh, early I think yesterday. He didn't propose any changes. Um, uh, I I think we should. I think the, most of the state. I'm thinking to hold fast where we are. Um, we need to look at a little bit. I was looking at the SPI, the thirty sixty all the way to um, calendar year, and it was um, uh, up in um, uh, San Juan. So we, we've got it currently under um, D0, so we just want to take a look, um, and it was in that um, above average, for looks like for most all of the SPI time scales, but I think, uh, yeah, let me go. yeah. Yeah, there's back to the SPI. Yeah. Um, that was my only uh, observation from there. It was uh, more, you can see that dry spot on the Arizona side pop, uh, lingering on throughout all of the different, uh, um, all the way through the water year through 30 days. But as you go on the other side of the Chusca Mountains, um, east side into San Juan, it looks wetter than average. But um, I think that, that, that the Dinata spot is good. I don't, I wouldn't change anything there, right? Um, and I, I'm, I'm still tending to hold fast on that, that D1 over through, um, through Quay, uh, mainly for a little longer term dryness as opposed to the short term. Yeah, that's kind of my initial is, is kind of minimal changes here. Yeah. I'd like to see how the next, you know, we have another system coming through this weekend. And I have a hesitation when, when you're in a generally a dry wintertime environment. If we were on the Gulf Coast or a wetter environment, I, I would be more willing to change. But I'm, I'm a little hesitant to do big changes in the right. middle of winter. Right. Um, we're still building our stuff back. But I think that long-term dryness is something of us to look at. Maybe not this week, uh, but see how things unfold in the January is that soil moisture really is starting to, to dip down. Um, over the east, again, we would expect some of it, but um, we may want to start thinking next month, pushing, if this continues, expanding maybe the D0. I'm hesitant to do it in winter. Um, yeah. You know, now if we start we start seeing really low snowpacks, I, I would pull the trigger on that. But, you know, it's kind of, because uh, drought is drought, and no matter what, what form the precipitation comes in. But I do think we may want to consider, at least on the southern tier, some expansion to D0. I mean, yeah. we've had a pretty dry 90, you know, 60 to 90 days there in Division 8. Yeah. Uh, so that's something to think about. And snowpack is not there right now. They're, you know, roughly a third of where they should be. Uh, the northern tier I really don't want to mess with right now. But yeah. I, I think if we really had, you know, we're forced to do changes this week, maybe Division 8, that, that area. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm like you. I'm kind of hesitant to pull the trigger in with a lot of change right now. Yeah, no, I, I agree on that. Um, we had a, down in the south, um, and um, Jason can 
can vouch for this. Um, we had a dust storm a couple of days ago. So it was pretty dry, and it, even south of the border, very dry. Um, so I I would even think that in that area, the little spot in um, Hidalgo through Doniana could even um, be nudged up a bit. Uh, I, I was just looking at the SPI um, in Doniana, and it was actually into the uh, past the D, D zero was in the D one, but I, I I wouldn't want to go that far. But uh, maybe ex potentially even expanding it through Hidalgo. Um, not a lot of observations down there through um, through the connecting with Arizona, but that's another p potential area to look at. What do you think, Jason? You on the call? Yeah, I'm here. Uh, yeah, as you were saying, if you want to expanding it to the east, uh, not a whole lot of observations there either. We haven't had our co-op in like, or around the area for a while. Um, so I was looking at some numbers in uh, Deming for the year so far, it was about 4.7 inches below normal. Mm. Uh, but the antelope well is done there in the boot hill hasn't done too bad, but uh, just up, you know, north west of there a little bit of animals is down a little bit. Um, but, you know, I think the last time we had this talk, there was a system that was supposed to be bringing some decent precipitation to the area that didn't really materialize, especially for the east. Uh, so I probably wouldn't have any problems expanded um, eastward. And even if you're thinking of going to be one, so do you think you may may want to wait until after this current system? What probably um, by the weekend maybe? What do you think? It looks like the QPS were showing a little bit of precept may come through in the southern part of the state. Yeah, it's looking good. I think it's similar like to that last call that we had where almost the same kind of system looking out of the Baja region. Uh, I saw that the WPC has gone to almost you know, two inches near the Arizona and New Mexico border area and tapering off to you know, about a half inch as we get into like, the parts of the Taro County plains, uh, which would be pretty good for this time of year. Uh, so I wouldn't have problems to held off and see what happens with this upcoming system since it's expected in the next couple of days. Okay. Yeah, what I'd... areas do you think you'll get hit with this storm? What areas? Yeah, what areas do you think of the, of the state do you think will see more moisture or will actually see moisture? The western areas are the, is where the models are putting out the best, you know, like Luna, mm -hmm. Hidalgo, up at the Gila. Um, so then it tapers it off, but it's still showing about at least a half inch, I think, as we go into the um, Otero plane uh, from the WPC forecast for, uh, yeah. like, the one through five. So I was looking at the five days. And, yeah, you've got uh, that there. It's showing even two inches there on Las Cruces. So if it materializes, you know, we're in good shape, but... We haven't had much luck with uh, the models uh, and their QPS over the last several systems. We've sort of been lacking on the planes. Yeah, and this for us at Albuquerque, you know, right now we're we're looking at this. Of course, most of for the northern tier law, that should be snow as well. So uh, at the higher elevations. So certainly, uh, as the forecast progresses, we're on Tuesday. So this is. This is kind of the day, you know, this is through uh, Sunday morning, through Christmas morning. So certainly if we go into the seven-day total here, a um, little bit more there. So, yeah, it, it's it's uh, the models are kind of coming together. I'm, I'm not working operations this week, but certainly something to watch. Uh, I think for most of the, at least the northern part of the state, a good bit of that's probably going to be snow at those higher elevations. Um, with rain, um, rain at the uh, cold rain at the floor. Yeah, I really can't mean the rain, especially on the first this first system coming up, even up to about nine thousand feet. 
uh, it was fairly warm uh, looking out of the southwest. Uh, if, if we get something with that mix system, it doesn't look as moist around Christmas time. That one definitely bring the snow levels down, but not quite as much moisture with the trajectory of that one. Okay. So here is uh, just kind of a, a discussion here. Here's an experimental forecast coming from CPC that's kind of at the edge of our operational day three. So at least 10% probability of uh, you know heavier snow at those northern elevations, but this is the kind of day four uh, and day five. So day four is really the best. So there's Here's your probabilities of snow sleet. Um, that's a totally experimental. This is a, a model derived, um, but gives you an idea there kind of what we're looking more for that snow coverage is higher elevations. And like Jason said, it is, it's kind of a pretty deep moisture tap. We are looking at kind of a, com a one two combination here. Uh, one system uh, kind of pushing through that first one, then kind of a second tier uh, system along the northern edge. So. Uh, that kind of gives you an idea of roughly what you may be expecting snow rain line right there. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think we've got a good sense of um, where we stand uh, for the recommendations. I think we're mainly just hold fast um, to see what the, this current next two systems, the, maybe by the middle of next week to see get another, to look at the... Um, um, the south and uh, maybe the east but yeah sound good sounds good to me okay yeah I I agree I, I'd like to see what these systems do I know it's supposed to be an analysis but um, I think certainly we need to see what it happens and then start looking in January because it's winter um, I don't want to shift the lines a whole lot unless we really just turn off the tap altogether. Right. Okay. All righty. So let's move on to U.S. Bureau of Reclamation Reservoir Status Report with Raymond. Sure can. Um, let me go to my here. <clears throat> I started in the Rio Grande and up north in Colorado Potoro Reservoir. 15,350. 82 acre feet. Heron, 70,649. Nevado, 48,013 acre feet. Abiquiu, 118,465. 118,465. Coach T, 45,877. <clears throat> and um, Elephant Butte is 184,547. And Cavallo, 19,958. And on the uh, Pecos, Santa Rosa is 56,167. Sumner, 25,972. Uh, Bratton, 34,480. And in Avalon, 2,073. <clears throat> so we're doing well. Um, the rear land is on cruise control. The uh, <clears throat> natural flows are keeping everything continuous. So we're definitely on, on, on the off season and um, just enjoying the, the quiet before the next season because uh, we're not sure what the snowpack will do and what that will leave us for storage for next irrigation season. Of course, we're all watching that closely. And so I was asking about the storm. Every storm hopefully counts and adds some to the snowpack or even to the ground groundwater. Uh, uh, you know, ground moisture. So on the Pecos, though, um, we have about 22 CFS release coming out of Sumner to augment the flows in the critical habitat area for the Shiner. Um, the flows are continuous. Um, <clears throat> we're not sure if we're seeing um, ice buildup and breakage and, and flow again at the Acme Gauge. It seems to be our problem I mean, it's cold. Um, day starts getting funky. Um, but right now, things are looking well. We're keeping flows continuous and um, maintaining and adjusting flows as needed. Uh, but otherwise, we're doing well. 
That's about all I have left. Anyone has questions? Hey, Ram, it's Royce here at Albuquerque. Yeah, I know it's on the Acme gauge. Just doing that. Um, I was going to give a call. I think that's a GS gauge. I was going to give a, a shoot an email to the GS because I had to do a lot of editing yesterday. Um, so yeah. It was a big ice affected or, or something was in the orifice or whatever because it's it's up and down pretty bad. So yeah. I'll, yeah, uh, we know. We noticed that over the years is that there's a lot of ice buildup. You know, the temperatures get cold in these cold snaps, and then um, it builds and then it breaks loose. And um, I couldn't think of moisture in that area. Was there that it could, you know, affect acne that way? But I'm definitely seeing uh, more that's, ice. That's uh, ice buildup. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, we're trying to edit that through, but. Sometimes we can't. Okay. Do okay, great. Yeah, and that's only that yeah. editing is only going to apply to when we can catch it to our uh, our Ahaps page. Of course, if you're you're doing your own feed off of um, Hads or the Goes or whatever, it's going to do that. But if you're ingesting Weather Service Chef data, Chef encoded data, those edits will kind of come out. But um, yeah, it's just if it's ice impacted, I'll I'll throw a note on Ahaps uh, about that. Um, Will someone actually go out there and check it, or what? Uh, if it's a GS gauge, I'll shoot a note over to the GS. I think that I have to see who yeah. services that one. It's probably Las Cruces Field Office, and if they got somebody to go right. take it. That's, yeah, that's if they could, then, uh, that way it gives us a better handle on what to do with our release. You know. Like yeah, I. Yeah, it's definitely a gauge malfunction, but I, I think that's probably ice impacted. So I'll uh, okay. I'll shoot them an email today. Maybe even give them a call. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. All right. Any other questions for Raymond? We're good. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks much. All right. Um, Royce, did you, say, did you say you had a few more things with the uh, NRCS, or did you cover what you wanted with uh, during your, your presentation? I, I think so. I haven't even had a chance to look at Chris's presentation. I have it here. This was uh, as of last week, and then he had to go out of town. Right. Um, so I can run through it real quick. I certainly can send it out. Um, let's see here. So here's um, – I can run through it real quick if people want – um, that was as of last week, but uh, certainly looking at the, the basins a little better, and I do like this little tool. Um, you know, that's what we're looking for at baseline. As of last week, we've seen some changes, obviously, um, and these are averaging out the total basins. But that Rio Grande was at 71 percent. Of course, it's a little higher in the headwaters. I think showing 48 percent. We're a little bit higher now there. Uh, that Rio Grande, uh, as of last week, at 71. Um, the Rio Grande to Elephant Butte Basin at 81% of normal. Um, and let's see, going a little bit further down, you can see, though, certainly the Upper Canadian is lower. Um, the Little Colorado is very low, the Gila the Salt Basin, um, which is a little bit in our state. Uh, and then the Pecos one, that's, I'm definitely concerned the Upper Pecos just has not gotten the snow so far uh, this year. And uh, here's the individual snowpack depths as of last year, I mean, as of about last week. Um, and I will send this out with the slides for those who want it. Um, but here's some of our actual numbers here. You can see are just our common. These are, these are snow depth versus snow water equivalent. Um, and then uh, there is the west wide. Um, I think this is definitely telling where the storm track has been. Uh, the Great Basin, those areas are doing great. Cascades are looking wonderful. You go east of the Cascades, and uh, they're, they're, they're near getting there, but uh, you can see certainly the rest of the West is, is enjoying a little more than we are here, um, down here in the Southwest. And then uh, this is water year to date, same numbers. So uh, Upper Rio Grande showing a lot lower uh, as of last week, um, the headwaters in the upper, and then the, the Elephant Butte segment, and uh, just kind of the same story. So same story, different way, and I think he's got some individual, and there's water year to date. 
that's even better since that's since October 1st through December 14th. Um, that certainly tells you where the moisture's been. Not here. Not here. <laughs> <laughs> and then still water equivalent water year to date, uh, this is, uh, yeah, so this is, 14th minus the 30th, so this is a change it looks like. So, um, you know, we are increasing. Like I said, we've had a, we had a pretty good system this weekend, and um, not much. Looks like some loss down at the lower, fort, in the lower part of the uh, basins. So I'll send that out with it. Um, but Chris said he was going to be out of town. I think he's going to be out of town until uh, January. So, um, but... Uh, the, like I said, the NRCS website has got a cornucopia of data there. Um, I like looking at the basin-wide averages, but it's certainly there. But that's all I have from Chris. Okay. Much appreciated. I'll send a note to Chris to tell him thanks for that. Um, so I think, did, did you cover a little bit, Royce, about the USGS streamflow or... Yeah, so okay. I had the 14-day average in yeah. there, um, and let me hop back over to that. Uh, where did I put that? Yeah, we find where I put that map. You started it earlier. Yeah, I'm looking for it. I've got a lot of hidden slides there in here. There. Right before this intersection. Yeah, so um, I knew they were short because uh, I had invited GS to, to come out to this meeting here physically this week, and I know they're short of folks. But this is just the average from, from the uh, New Mexico uh, uh, Water Science Center. Of course, all of them, you know, GS generates is nationwide. But that's the 14-day average. Um, and uh, so certainly most streams right now are, are where they should be this time of year. Uh, without pegging down to individual streams and looking, um, you know, if there's gauge issues or or what have you. Often, though, um, the only issue I've always had with this product is, so when you get down to base flow, um, sometimes that difference is, it shows you in a much drier category. It, it, we're talking a matter of tenths of a foot of, of difference in base flow. So um, I, I kind of look mainly at the main stem rivers. Yeah. Um, versus some of the, the larger main stem. I, I've always had that concern with this product. Right. Yeah, it shows everything. Typically, yeah, typically you're in the lower third or lower, you know, lower 10%, but, I mean, when your normal is 3.5 feet and you're at 3.3 feet, is there really a difference? You know? Right. So. Okay. All right. Run it up. All right, so we want to move on to the Office of the State Engineer. Uh, get that up. Yeah, there we go. There. So either Molly or Julie. Yeah, we're both here. All right. I don't, I mean, I like when Raymond gave out his numbers, our numbers are really close, so I think we can just kind of scroll through our um, standard presentation I did remember that we were going to look at some comparing something uh, a shorter long-term average like a five-year one but we haven't gotten around to that yet so we'll see if we can do it for next meeting we'll try but uh, anyway so there's you know standard reservoir status I mean I don't think there's any big changes from last Month from last month, but yeah. I, I guess for Navajo, the only thing I point out was it's above what we had there last year by about 200,000 acre feet. Um, I thought that looking at last year was a little bit more exciting than last month because there's mm -hmm. been no big change. So that's the difference in Navajo. Um, you uh, had a small decrease to last year of 22,000 acre feet. Actually, the rest of the reservoirs are going to have a slight uh, decrease in storage, um, probably because of, I would say, lack of precip, since nothing really is happening right now as far as releases. Um, yeah, that's the only interesting thing I'm thinking of last year's numbers. Um, I could, Santa Rosa, last year, difference 
13,000 acre feet, Brantley, um, about 12,000, Karen, it's about the same, there's about um, 3,000 acre feet more, and then Alvado, looks like there's uh, 30,000 more, and then last year, and then going back to Abiquiu, we're showing that there's less in storage now as compared to last year, about 10, thousand acre feet. Elephant View, um, about thirty thousand. And uh Caballo about um twelve thousand less than last year. And there's the table. Does anyone have any questions on the presentation? I think we're good. Yeah, I think we're, we're we were discussing the, what what um, having more than one um, average, comparing the right. the longer versus shorter, and, and I'm you know I'm not right. tied to either one, uh, but it's interesting to um, to 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 compare both, um, you know, because we have putting in some really wet years versus um, you know the the last few dry years. Um, right. So it's something we want to experiment. Go ahead. No, I think we'll have to look at that. Yeah, I was just curious. You guys want it presented on the same, on the same. Um, yeah, we yeah we had had one of the drought authors was on last week, and there was the conversation of, so we're using a 30-year normal. I think we're using the 81 to 2010, which right. incorporated that wet period in the 80s. So he was asking, are these really reflective of drought conditions? Because he, you know, he's, this particular author was out of our uh, climate prediction center in D.C. So it was understanding that no, you know, that was a really wet period in those averages. Now that we're we're at the bottom, you know, where does that change? So I, you know, five or ten year. Yeah. Um, we just haven't had a chance. Yeah, haven't had a chance to run the numbers, yeah. but I, I would be interested in that. And I, I know we were talking from a communications standpoint, having talked with some in the media in the last few months, um, that because the folks certainly out of these are not. They're not understanding. Well, this was full in the '80s. Why is this not full now? Where's the water going? Da 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 da. So I, I think that's a will be a useful number because um, people don't. They're not real. They're not thinking. They're not you know looking at that perspective. But um, yeah, yeah, it's. We'll work on that. Okay, for <laughs> next year. <laughs> Put it off till next year. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That sounds like a good. I, I like that idea. We'll do that next year. <laughs> but yeah, I think it would be useful to to have some uh, comparisons. Um, but you know, I I think you know, we we can still keep the the thirty year as another reference I mean, because we that's a lot of things are referenced to thirty year, including the snow tail, in some cases. All yeah, right. we use we do use ten year normals. You know that's you know, the optical climate normals, all those. So the 10-year period, I think, the last 10 years is a good one as well. Yeah. Right. All righty. Uh, let's move on. Uh, I didn't hear anything from NMDA. Um, I got an email. They are not going to be here. Um, they're both out, so. Okay. So that's for uh, both at the uh, forestry, too, right? Yeah, that's the forestry. Uh, yeah. uh, Susan Rich and um, uh, her name escapes her right now. Uh, Mika Michaela, I think was it. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, Michaela Hester. So we'll catch up with them. We'll get their um, any uh, updates on uh, forestry. Um, we'll do that. And uh, anything? Um, any any new news items, Anthony, on uh, with uh, FSA? Hey, um. Right off the bat, no, and I, I do want to apologize. I haven't been on the call uh, lately. I will do better this next year I, with my new job and everything, just trying to get a handle of what I'm supposed to be doing and everything. So, But from the Farm Service Agency standpoint, we are um, our loss assessors are out there doing our grazing loss assessments. Um, a lot of that information is, is being used from the drought monitor and the Palmer indexes and those things because that's kind of what they play off of as far as establishing those those grazing loss indexes throughout the state. So, um, but that's kind of where we're at with some of the things from the Farm Service Agency. There, there probably will be payments made um, 
off of those drought conditions um, throughout this next year. It's just going to depend on how those how those loss assessments come back. Okay. Yeah. If if, if you're um, uh, privy to sh- sharing any any of the statistics <laughs> or any um, um, you know what areas are are hit the most in terms of losses or um, payments made, that would that would be great to, just to get the sit. Uh, just to get a, a feeling for you know where where are, are folks uh, feeling it the most and um, and then how are they how's it going with um, FSA? Definitely, uh, um, for those of you that don't under we utilize whenever they for from a drought standpoint for payments. Um, several of our counties are looking at even dividing the the areas. Right now, it's every one of the counties is. Um, establishes their their losses and things by drought on a county-wide basis, so it's an average of a county. Um, but several of the counties are looking at dividing out the counties um, to, to kind of isolate, because there are certain counties, uh, especially down like in the southwest part in Grant County, Hidalgo County, that part of the county is really hit hard with drought, and part of the county isn't, but when you average it, it doesn't meet the requirements. So they're looking at dividing those things out. So this next year, um, once they get us all the information, that all comes in in March. And so I'll have more of that information around March time frame. Sounds great. Yeah, because right, right now we've got uh, this, the southeast part, well, the southern part of Hildago um, under D0. Um, and, and I don't know. And then, you know, a little, the, the little part of uh, Grant, but the rest of the county is very different, it seems like it, with, um, with, with, with regard to drought. Because it's at a higher elevation. Correct. So Anthony, this is Billy with OSC. Do you have any idea how you guys are going to divide up the counties? The, it, it's really, on the division part of it, it's really up to the county committees to identify um, with their constituents of how they're going to divide it, whether it's, uh, they try to use like major division lines, whether it's landmarks or or dividing out some area that's very delineated. So, um, but each county committee has the autonomy to decide how they want to divide that out. Um, it, so they have to come up with that criteria and submit it to the state. So it's going to be very different for every county. So it's kind of depending, like for, um, I mean, if you look at like Chavez County, they're they're looking at trying to de- that little boot hill area of the county. They're trying to figure out how to how to delineate that and how to what are the landmarks whether they use highways or roads or some way of, of dividing that out or it can be based on um on property areas whether it's like a ranch or a, or a ranch border and and to encompass somebody's property okay very, very interesting thanks yeah. This is Royce here. I'm the senior service hydrologist here at the Weather Service. Uh, one question is, um, this came up the last call, uh, on the topsoil uh, assessments coming from the county agents. Um, is there a way, I know previously when I've worked in other uh, states, um, some of these states had broken those up by counties, so we had a kind of a better idea spatially because right now we just get a lump number for the state. Is that something maybe we can start getting after the first year as kind of a breakout from the county agents um, of what, what they're reporting, because that would really help us. We, you know, we've got the uh, all the objective measures of soil moisture and, and pasture conditions and those sort of things, but getting that on the ground from the county agents would really help if, if, if that's something we can do. Um, I mean, from the Farm Service Agency, I mean, I can share the information of what we, we get from, from our independent losses uh, assessments. And and like I said, that'll be that's public information when we put it out there. So um, we can provide you with those percentages. I'm not sure exactly um, the information that the extension service is providing or what they're gathering on certain things. Okay, yeah, that's normally I think normally through NAS, but um, yeah, certainly we, we uh, we'd like to try to get that because that would help us. You know, I found other states, you know, because especially the county agents, you know, they're out there talking to folks and, and going around the county, so they're their eyes on the ground, and that really helps us uh, geeks sitting here at the office looking at stuff from space. So, um, certainly, maybe so. I was talking about in January, maybe uh, Dave and I, and, and you can get together and see if we can get uh, talk to somebody over at NAS. Okay, sounds good. 
Great. Progress. Sounds good. <laughs> awesome. Look forward to getting more information. That's, that's our key, especially in these big areas. All right. Any other questions? All right. So I think we've got a, um, uh, we can communicate to the drought monitor author about um, holding fast on most all of the areas, waiting to see what the current uh, weekend is going to bring. Maybe re-looking back at some of the D0 in our areas in the south and keeping track of the east. Um, any other announcements before we move on to the scheduling? <laughs> 